PIDAC 2023, we have George Bach all the way from Australia. How are you today? Yeah, good thanks, Tracy. You know, George, you're involved in numerous projects right now. What are you here at PDAC? What is your number one priority? Yes, I'm here with Valor Resources. Um, so our two major projects there are uranium in the Athabasca Basin, of which we found a little bit of rare earth, so I'll tell you about that in a little while, um, and, and then copper in Peru, which um, was not supposed to be a big project, but that's turned out to being a spectacular one. So that's my reason for being here. And of course, George, George is an expert in the critical mineral sector, and there's so many things in the debate right now. I mean, just what happened with Tesla last week. Um, right now, we've been addressing the shortage issue in critical minerals of actual talent. How is it in Australia? Oh, look, Australia's been pretty tough since COVID. I mean, they, sh they shut the borders down. Um, you saw exploration, for example, go through the roof. The minute the borders opened, everyone started to go back around the world to look for other exciting projects and so forth. People are hard to get, people are hard to retain in the industry. Um, everyone's running off to lithium because it's the sexiest thing going around at the moment, so that's attracting a lot of people. Um, everyone's climbing over. I mean, if you look at the, the shortage of, of supply, and then you need people to find it, people to build it, I think there's a bigger problem than just the resource, if you like. Well, we couldn't agree with you more. We were talking to Mark Levier earlier today, and he was explaining how the SME just last week gave a quarter of a million dollars worth of scholarships away. But we were talking about how, what are we going to need to do to attract these, these talented people to this sector to achieve these decarbonization goals that we all agree we need? So I've been on this for a while. We actually need people in the industry to go back to their schools primary school, secondary schools, and actually talk to the students and the kids and tell them what mining's all about. Bring it to life. Tell them about how getting into geology or mining engineering or finance or driving a truck and tell them how they impact the world. Because at the moment, um, they're not being taught that through the syllabus and I can only talk about Australia. So we need to get off our backsides. We need to go and influence kids at grade six, grade seven, where they're just starting to develop a thought process of what they're going to do in life, get them at high school and, and, and get them, you know, just inspire them is what I'm saying is um, we've got to do. That's one example. On the topic, of course, of critical minerals, we recently did, the CMI did a list of all the different critical minerals for uh, the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK and Europe, and we found 14 that everybody agreed <laughs> were the most top priority critical minerals. I'm going to put you on the spot. What do you think is your favorite top critical mineral? And I note, I said your favorite top critical mineral. Favorite? I mean, for some reason, I've got this love affair with rare earths after stumbling over it in 05. Um, so if, if you want one, rare earths has definitely got a soft spot for me. It's been something I've been heavily involved with. Um, lithium's still short, um, we still haven't got nowhere near lithium. Um, graphite, I scream from the rooftops and wonder when the day that graphite gets respect in the industry. Um, uranium, and the one that's probably, here's one for you, copper, right? 22 million tonnes um, demanded every year, we just are not replenishing enough of it. And there's this old fashioned recession, copper, downward spiral. Well, copper is now part of the new evolution, part of the new energy mix and so forth. Um, we've got to get back into really focusing on copper, copper exploration. We need support from the big companies to come down to the explorers to help out. So George, I can't believe it, but you're going to actually answer the question that we know you probably have the answer for. And what's really going on with Elon Musk, Musk saying he doesn't need the rare earths in his EV vehicles? Yeah, look, I mean, there's no problems in people having aspirations to eliminate things. But when you're looking at trying to get these critical minerals solved, um, 10 years ago, there was Siemens who came out and they said had, they had a, a rare earth free permanent magnet for their wind turbines. It never eventuated. They were talking about eliminating dysprosium and terbium. And I was at the heart of that part of the rare earth um, component of dysprosium terbium. And that hurt us because people said, well, it's not needed. Price is suppressed. People didn't want to explore for it. It's back, hot topic, DOD, DOE, everyone's talking about it. And then Elon, who captures the Im imagination of everyone, comes out and says, we're going to do a rare earth free car. You can imagine how that's gone down with investors and it's, it's hurting us. And um, I, 
it'll be interesting to see if it gets executed and delivered into production. Well, George, thank you so much for dropping by today and, and giving us an update on why you're at PDAC 2023. Good to see you. Thanks, Tracy.